Heavy rain stopped Ray's golf game just after it started. He and the rest of his foursome lingered outside the clubhouse for a bit to see if the rain would stop, but it became clear that it wouldn't. He was disappointed because he really enjoyed playing, and it was the best source of exercise for the week. Of course, his activity was limited not only by heart disease. At 64, such activities would be limited anyway. He was still in good shape. He watched what he ate and still did most of the work in the yard of the modest home he shared with his wife of 40 years, Josie. So Ray found himself walking through his door a little after 9 a.m., rather than the 12.30 or so he usually got home. He did not warn his wife about his early arrival. He did not see the need for this and had never done this before when something like this happened. He would simply explain when he got home. But he quickly forgot about why he came earlier as soon as he opened the front door. And I forgot because his wife was standing there in the hallway. She was wearing a pink silk robe, but it was open in the front, exposing her large, saggy breasts. This in itself would not have raised questions. But in this form, she accompanied a man younger than their daughter to the front door. At 59, Josie was still a very attractive woman. She wore shoulder-length dark brown hair. Her breasts had always been large, but they became even larger when their daughter Christine was born 39 years ago, although they remained about the same when Leo joined the family three years later. As you'd expect from a middle-aged woman, her ass and belly had gained some weight over the years, but it didn't matter to Ray, and apparently it didn't matter to this guy either. She raised her head when he walked through the door, and instead of the guilty, shy look he expected, she smiled, as always, expressing her happiness that he was home. Then, to his surprise, she came forward to greet him. Hello, honey. You came home early? Josie moved to kiss him, but Ray managed to quickly move his head to the side. His wife looked at him in confusion. Are you out of your mind, Josie? It's better not to know where your mouth was, although I have a pretty good idea of where it was, Ray explained. Josie looked back at the young man, seeming to forget he was there and realizing what she had almost done. Oh, Ray, of course, I'm sorry. Honey, this is Luke. Luke, this is my husband, Ray. Luke was perhaps an inch under six feet, Ray, but he had the well-developed physique of an active young man in his 20s or 30s. He was probably an athlete in college, and maybe still is. He had dark brown hair, cut short, and a simple face, neither handsome nor ugly. He stepped forward and his hand landed on Ray's shoulder. Ray was tempted to respond physically, but resisted for now. Nice to meet you. Josie has told me a lot about you. And don't worry. I'm sure in 25 or 30 years, I'll have the same hardware problem as you. And I hope I'll be as relaxed about it as you are. Of course, what he missed most was sex with Josie. The problem is age. But they had sex toys, and Ray thought that everything was fine with them sexually. It turned out not. In response to Luke's slight smile, Ray bared his teeth. Who the hell was this asshole to be so condescending to him? But he didn't want to go to jail so he restrained his ardor again. Luke, get out of my house, and if I catch you in it again, I will kill you. I have a weapon. The small smile suddenly disappeared from Luke's face as he took a step back and then walked around Ray to the front door. Hey, that's cool, man. I got the impression that you don't mind. Ray locked the door after it was closed, took a quick glance at his wife, and headed to his bedroom. He was incredibly angry and confused, that his wife didn't seem to repent or even care about what had just happened. She entered the room shortly after him. He noticed that her robe was already buttoned. Well, that was rude. Ray turned to her, not believing that she saw any fault in his behavior after what she had just done. He wasn't going to talk to her right now, but this was going too far. It was Ralph. I walk into my own house and see you walking some guy. You obviously just had sex with to the door and I was rude. You're really out of your mind. Yossi's face softened. She walked up to him and tried to put her hand on her husband's shoulder, but he pulled away as soon as he felt her touch. Darling, I'm sorry, but so much time has passed. What we were doing was good and I enjoyed it, but it just didn't meet my needs. Perhaps it would be a good idea to share this information with me. Where the hell did you find this guy? He's Marjorie's friend. 
Friend, he's twice her age. And at that time, she was a single woman. When she met Oscar, she rejected him. But she and I talked about him, and she gave me his information. Do you understand that he's just using you girls for easy sex? Actually, he explained that he likes older women. Josie replied, When he was 18, his mother forced him to help the neighbor women around the house. Some of them couldn't afford to pay much, so they offered sex. He says he got to the point where women his age didn't suit him. And even if he's just using me for sex, I'm doing the same thing, so what difference does it make? How long has this been going on? Ray asked. A few months. When you go golfing, he comes and takes care of me. He doesn't stay long, and I clean everything up before you return. It won't affect you in any way. You get your exercises and I get mine, so to speak. Ray suddenly understood why Saturday became bed linen change day. Well, I don't care if you think it doesn't concern me just because I'm not here. I won't accept this and will give up golf if I have to. Raymond, please, be smart about this. You need your golf game. This is the only physical activity you have. And I have needs that need to be met and that can be taken care of at the same time. It makes sense. Maybe for you, Josephine, but not for me. It was the last time. With that, Ray walked into his bedroom to take a shower and change into something more casual. Josie reached into her closet to put on some clothes, then left the house and drove several miles to the house where Christine lived with her husband and two daughters, Josie's granddaughters. By the time Ray had showered and dressed, the house was empty. There was no note, so he figured his wife just wanted to get away from him. This suited him quite well, since he wanted the same thing. The shower calmed him down and he tried to think logically. He could understand that Josie still had needs, but this was too much. He would never have done what she did if their positions had been reversed and he didn't feel like he had crossed a line. She'll just have to deal with it. The next day, Sunday, was the 4th of July, and the whole family gathered around the dinner table and then gathered again in the evening to go to a large public park for the fireworks display. This tradition had been going on since Christine was a child, and Ray looked forward to it every year. In the morning, Ray began preparing the meat. He marinated chicken and hamburgers and set out hot dogs for the younger children who would join them for the celebration. By the time guests started arriving, everything was ready, and Ray was looking forward to spending time with his family. The barbecue went smoothly. There were lots of friends there, and Josie looked radiant, smiling, and laughing. He was, of course, upset that he found her with another man, but she had been a wonderful wife for four decades, and that was something he could forgive. For once. As the guests began to leave the house, Ray excused himself and went to take a nap. Heart failure was limiting his stamina, and he wanted to be ready to enjoy the fireworks tonight. He kissed his wife on the cheek, let her know that he was going to lie down for a while, and headed to the bedroom. When the alarm rang a couple of hours later, he felt full of energy. The rest did him good, and now he could calmly enjoy the fireworks. He changed into clean clothes and went into the living room. His immediate family sat around the dining table, his wife at the far end, his granddaughters Julia, 19, and Allison, 17 to the right. Christine's husband, Eric, sat to the side, and Christine herself stood in front of the table, closest to Ray. Ray's son, Leo, and his wife, Rebecca, sat on the other side of the table opposite Julia and Allison. They all looked at him. Ray immediately realized that this was an intervention. What's the matter? His daughter, Christine, was apparently the spokesman for the group. We wanted to talk to you about Mom. Ray looked at his wife, but her expression was emotionless. He hoped it wasn't what he thought. He looked at his daughter again. What about Mom? Mom told us about Luke. She told me, didn't she? Ray asked incredulously. Yes. And about your problems? Ray simply stared at his wife, shocked that she would share such personal information with anyone, let alone their children and grandchildren. My problems, like this whole story in general, do not concern you. But mom's happiness is our business. So you're unhappy? Ray asked, 
addressing his wife directly. Yes, Ray, I'm happy. Please don't think it's not true, Josie replied. But she has needs, Dad, the daughter chimed in. And, well, those aren't things you can take care of. I mean, it's true, isn't it? So, you think I'm being unreasonable, selfish by not agreeing to this? We're not trying to put a label on it, Dad. We're just... Look, all we're saying is that since you can't do it, we think you should be more supportive of Mom quietly taking care of it herself. Ray looked around at his family members. Each of them supported, or at least seemed to support, that his wife was allowed to cheat on him. He may not have changed physically, but in those few seconds, Ray felt like he had aged 20 years, mentally and emotionally. He had never felt like such a useless old man as he did now. And, he said with difficulty, do you all think so? He looked them all in the eyes, and they nodded in agreement. But Ray thought it was too easy for some to just agree. He wanted to be as sure as possible of this. Leo, do you agree with this? Ray asked, looking into his son's eyes. Yes, I mean, it wouldn't be with you, his son replied. And it will help Mom. Eric? Ray asked, turning to his brother-in-law, Christine's husband. Ray had never seen him go against his wife, and he certainly didn't expect him to do so now. I don't think it'll be much of a problem, Ray. Rebecca? Ray said as he caught the eye of his sister-in-law, who seemed to be almost hiding behind Leo. Oh, Dad, I'm not really... she said, trying to avoid answering. Ray always found it interesting that even after 20 years, Eric still called him by his first name, while Rebecca almost immediately began calling him Dad. Nonsense, Rebecca. You have been part of this family for three years now. Besides, you are a grown woman, and I would be interested to know your opinion. Well, it seems everything will be all right. I mean, as long as she is careful and reserved. And finally, it came to his granddaughters. They belong to a completely different generation. So he suspected that they had a completely different attitude towards this issue. Infidelity in marriage seemed commonplace, almost expected these days, but he still wondered if they would choose against him. They spent so many wonderful hours together. He often attended their performances and constantly pampered them at the mall. Will they really be against it? What about you, girls? Oh, Grandpa, we shouldn't be involved in this. Come on, you're both adults. Well, almost, and I'm sure you have some thoughts. Julia and Allison looked at each other, then at Mom and Dad, who seemed to encourage them to speak up. At that moment, Ray realized what they were going to say. Whether they believed it or not, their mother clearly convinced them to speak out in favor of their grandmother. Well, I mean, said Julia, the eldest, that a lot of our friends are okay with their boyfriends and girlfriends dating other people. It's just sex. Ah, a rallying cry for the infidels. It's just sex. Ray figured it would come out at some point, and it did. Although he was surprised it took so long, his wife was willing to go to such lengths to get her way so she could have her boy toy once a week. Ray suddenly realized there was no point in arguing. She will most likely find a way to do this, regardless of his opinions or feelings. Everything that was before is gone, and it will never come back. He looked at Josie, who was looking at him expectantly. That's all, Josephine. Majority rule. I think you'll get what you want. His wife's face lit up as if her heart's desire had been fulfilled, and perhaps it was. Ray simply turned and walked towards the front door. He had only walked a few feet before he heard his wife's voice calling his name. He hoped that maybe she would change her mind after seeing how it affected him and turned to face her, but this did not happen. Can I tell Luke that you were just joking about killing him? Certainly, as you say, I'm going for a ride. But Dad... Leo exclaimed. It's time to go to the fireworks. Go without me, Ray replied. I don't want to go anymore. It was quiet as Ray walked out the front door, but as soon as the door closed, he heard sounds of cheering. He looked back through the front window, the blinds were open and the curtains were hanging, and saw Josie being hugged by all her supporters. Looks like they were in this together, against him. Before the mini holiday ended, Josie was already calling her lover on the phone. She would reassure him that she and Ray had discussed everything 
and he had withdrawn his objections. She wanted to make sure that he had not left for another woman and that she could still expect his visit on Saturday morning. He picked up on the third ring and assured Josie that he would be there and looked forward to it. With that, the family piled into the car and headed out to watch the city's always impressive fireworks display. They talked and laughed, glad that the trouble was behind them, and confident that Ray would be all right, that he would understand that it would not affect anything. Just as Eric was parking the car, Ray was sitting alone in his car, admiring the view of the city. He found this road into the nearby hills many years ago and came here when he needed to think. He was hurt by the support Josie received from everyone in the family. He thought that at least one of them would admit that his inability to perform his duties was not a reason for his wife's infidelity, but they were united against him, and it hurt. He felt like an outsider, like he was old and had been fired. It reminded him of the stories he had heard as a child, of how some communities would send their elders to certain death when they felt they were too old or infirm to contribute, and thus were simply taking away resources. He simply got in the way and was expelled. All he wanted to do now was sleep, but daytime sleep got in the way. It was already past midnight when he finally returned to the house. He noticed that his daughter's car was still there, along with Josie's, but everyone else had already left. He suggested that the sound of the alarm indicating that the car was locked alerted the occupants of the house because the front door opened when he approached. It was Josie. Where have you been? I worried so much. Ray simply walked past his wife without saying a word. He noticed that his daughter was sitting on the sofa and looking at him with interest. Why are you here? He asked. Mom got worried when you weren't there after the fireworks. Everyone else had to be somewhere tomorrow morning, so I stayed with her. You could at least answer the phone. Ray looked at his phone and remembered that he had turned it off when he arrived at the hills. He didn't want to be bothered. Well, as you can see, I'm fine. You can go home. Christine was stunned. Her father was the kindest and most polite person she knew, and she had never heard him talk like that to anyone, especially to her, his little daughter. She watched him as he walked into his bedroom until the door closed between them. Then she picked up her purse from the table and kissed her mother goodbye. By the time Josie finished cleaning the house and walked into the room, Ray was already asleep. The house was cool for the next week. Josie knew that, despite her silent agreement, Ray was not happy with what she was doing with Luke. But she believed that he could come to terms with it because he loved her, and she was sure that eventually he would forget about it, or at least put it out of his mind. For Ray, this was a complete destruction of his life. He was a devoted family man for four decades, but that didn't stop his entire family from casting him aside when his presence became inconvenient. The simple fact that Josie even sought support from her family over the affair was what Ray believed was the end of his marriage. Having every single one of them turn against him was a death blow to his family, or at least to the fact that he was part of it. He put everyone else first for years. Now everything was about to change. Like every Saturday morning for the past few years, Ray got into the car and drove to the country club to meet his foursome. This was a group of eight older men who reserved two halves in a row and then mixed fours each week. Ray tried his best to concentrate on the game, knowing what was happening in his house, and he had no doubt what was happening. It wasn't his worst performance, but it was his worst in a long time. He tried to smile at the good-natured ridicule, but it was not easy. Meanwhile, Josie stayed home and watched Ray get into the car and leave for a golf trip at 7 or a.m. She tried to express her affection and kiss him goodbye, but he remained silent and barely allowed her to press her lips to his cheek. She hated the idea that her husband had been hurt, but she put it out of her mind as soon as Luke pulled up to the footpath. She asked him to park further down the street and around the corner. She thought that parking in front of the house would be too provocative and would attract the attention of the neighbors, but there was nothing she could do about him coming to the door. She let him knock before opening the door and then invited him in. She was wearing only a robe and nothing else, and it ended up on the floor seconds after the door closed. They greeted each other with a long, passionate kiss, 
and then Luke easily scooped Josie up into his arms and carried her into the bedroom, placing her gently on the bed. Luke stepped back and undressed. Josie admired Luke's physique as he undressed. He wasn't overly muscular, but he was strong and in good shape, something Ray hadn't had in a long time, mostly due to age, of course. Damn it, she thought. Get him out of your head. This is not a competition. Their connection lasted about two hours. Luke showered while Josie made the bed and started the laundry. He helped her put new bedding on the bed and left. Josie climbed into the shower herself and washed herself thoroughly. She knew it was hard for Ray, and it was important that nothing reminded him of it. By 12.30, Josie was more than satisfied that the house and her body were in pristine condition and ready for her husband, who should be home at any moment. She had enjoyed herself, had her needs met, and was ready to devote all her attention to Ray for the rest of the week. He usually came home between 12.30 and 13 a row. When he did not come by 2 o'clock, she became alarmed, but not too much yet. By 3 o'clock, she began to worry and tried to call him on his mobile. The call went straight to voicemail. By 5, after making several calls and sending several text messages with no response, she began to become very worried. Finally, at 7, after sitting for another two hours without an answer from her husband, she called her daughter. She explained the situation, and within minutes, Christine and her husband, along with Josie's granddaughters, were in the living room. Eric went to the country club to find out some information. All they could tell him was that Ray was there and left a few hours ago. Christine called the police and found out that there were no records of incidents involving Ray, and at this time they could not file an official missing person report but they will write down his name in case they find out anything. Christine thanked them and hung up, not sure if anything would come of it. There was no one else to call. Josie didn't know any of the men he played golf with, let alone had any of their phone numbers. There was nothing to do but wait. It was almost 11 p.m. when Julia, sitting in front of the house, reported that she had just seen headlights coming into the driveway. Then, perhaps sensing a confrontation was imminent, she and her sister ran upstairs to their mom's old bedroom. Eric, who always got up early, had long since gone to bed in Leo's old room. Only Josie and Christine are left to face Ray. Ray walked through the front door, not surprised to see his wife breathing fire in the hallway, and only slightly surprised to see his daughter loitering in the living room. He had seen her car on the street, but thought that perhaps she would leave him and Josie alone. She must be willing to do anything to make her mother look weird. Where have you been? Josie spat. I was playing golf, Ray answered calmly. No more than 12 o'clock. You weren't there anymore. This is true. After golf, I had lunch at the clubhouse. Their chicken piccata is pretty good. Then I went to see the new movie with Dwayne Johnson. A little cliched, but I liked it. After that, damn it, Raymond. I don't want to know all the places you went. Well, you asked where I was, Ray muttered. I want to know why you didn't come home after golf like usual and why you didn't answer your calls. I didn't answer the calls because my phone didn't ring, he replied, showing his wife that his phone was turned off. And I didn't come home because I didn't intend to be in this house at the same time as your friend. This is funny, Raymond. Nothing changed. We finished and I cleaned the whole house long before you finished golfing. There was no reason for you to come home late at all let alone be out all day. It's as you see, Josephine, let me say again that I will not be in this house at the same time. It's late now, and I'm going to bed. Ray walked past his wife, looked closely at his daughter, but said nothing as he walked into the bedroom. He expected one of the women to follow him, but none of them did. As he was getting ready for bed, he heard other voices in the corridor and realized that Christine's whole family had gathered in the house. Great. By the time Josie said goodbye to everyone and walked into the bedroom, Ray was already asleep, or at least pretending to be. Josie couldn't be sure. She thought about waking him up so they could talk some more, but instead, she just went to bed. The next weekend went pretty much the same way, although this time there were no calls or messages. Josie simply accepted that Ray would be gone all day, and took the opportunity to completely clean out the house. 
However, Josie later began to worry about being left alone at home and called Christine, who agreed to come and keep her company until Ray returned home. Eric and their daughters remained at home. Ray arrived again around 11 acre and was surprised to see Christine's car parked at the curb. He wondered if another confrontation was brewing. He walked through the door, only to be greeted by a pleasant greeting from his wife, a kiss on the cheek, and a smiling daughter in the background. Why don't you change your clothes, love? Then you can tell me what you've been doing all day, Josie said, leaving Ray a little confused. Josie headed to the kitchen to get everyone a drink, while Ray went into the bedroom to change. The only conclusion he could draw was that she had been well taken care of by her lover today. So she was in a particularly relaxed and good mood. He changed into his pajamas and returned to the living room, where Christine seemed ready to leave but was apparently waiting for him. Dad, I know this is hard for you, but I just wanted to say how wonderful it is that you show your love for your mom by allowing her to do this. It really made a difference. By letting her? Ray thought. Is that how they see it? Now I want to tell you something, Christine. This is the last conversation on this topic. Last. Make sure everyone knows this. Of course, Dad, I understand. It's hard to get it out of your head if people talk about it all the time. I'll tell everyone. With these words, she kissed her father on the cheek and left. A moment later, Josie came in with drinks for both of them. Ray thought it took her a long time to bring the drinks, and he wondered if it was planned so Christine could tell him how wonderful he was. This went on for several months. Josie continued to enjoy a physical relationship with Luke, and Ray found himself experiencing and enjoying some new activities. He still played golf every Saturday morning and, of course, watched all the films that interested him, but at the same time he tried to diversify his activities. He played bowling, mini-golf, and even tried his hand at arcade games. He wasn't very good at it, but he had fun. Life at home was quite normal although the topic of Luke was carefully avoided. Every evening they dined together and had pleasant, albeit ordinary, conversations. The closeness they shared changed. Josie, convinced that her relationship with Luke had no impact on her marriage, continued to express her love and affection to her husband, and if she noticed that he rarely reciprocated her feelings, she did not say anything. Perhaps Josie had simply become too comfortable in this situation. Perhaps the fact that Ray didn't talk about Luke at all made her believe he was more okay with it than he really was. However, when Thanksgiving arrived, Ray was in for a shock. Mom, Luke has arrived. It was Christine speaking from the front of the house. Ray was sitting in a chair reading a newspaper when he heard this message. If he drank anything, he would spit it out on the floor. Oh, good, remarked his wife. He wasn't sure that he would definitely come. Ray pressed the lever that lowered the footrest and jumped out of the chair, which attracted Josie's attention. What the hell is he doing here? Ray spluttered, completely annoyed. I invited him to Thanksgiving, Josie answered as calmly as possible. He has no family in the city, and he has nowhere to go. I told you that I won't be in this house at the same time as him. You know that's why I'm not home all day on Saturdays, and now you invite him to my house for a family holiday? This is my home too, Raymond, and he doesn't come here for sex. It's no different than when the kids were growing up and their friends came over. It's just dinner, and I expect you to be on your best behavior. Josie turned and headed to the front door to greet her guest, effectively pushing her husband away and proud of herself for standing up for her. Well... They were lovers, sure, but she also considered Luke a friend, and it seemed to her that this was a completely appropriate gesture towards a friend. She met Luke at the door and introduced him to her children and their spouses, as well as her granddaughters. Taking his hand, she led him into the living room to greet her husband. She started talking before she even turned the corner. Luke, do you remember my... But Ray was no longer there, or at least not in the chair he had occupied just a few minutes before. She looked around but did not see him and assumed that he might have gone to the toilet. She headed to the bedroom when she heard the motor start to open the garage door. She made it to the kitchen garage door just in time to see the door begin to lower and Ray's car 
drive away. Was it Dad who left? Kristen asked her mother. Yes, it was him. Where is he going? Who knows, Josie replied irritably, heading to her bedroom to collect her thoughts. Luke approached Christine as Josie closed her bedroom door. Is there anything I can do? Maybe it would be better if I left? He asked. No, Luke, it's okay. This is your father's problem, not yours. You are always welcome here. I just don't want to cause any problems, but if you're sure, we know Luke and we appreciate it. The family and Luke bonded over food. Luke, as the new man, was the center of attention, but he also took an interest in the family. After the meal, he joined Leo and Eric to watch the football while the ladies went shopping. No one noticed Ray's car drive by. The holiday is long over. It was approaching 10 o'clock in the evening. The house was cleaned. The dishes were washed. The ladies returned from a shopping trip with a few things, but nothing special. Leo and Eric fell asleep on the couch, and Ray was still nowhere to be seen. Christine woke up her husband and children and told them to go home, intending to wait with her mother and stay the night. She always kept a few things here so that she could spend the night at her parents' house if necessary. Leo and Rebecca also left, and Christine was left to wait with her mother. Ray finally arrived almost midnight. He hoped Josie had already gone to bed, but she was waiting for him. She began to advance towards him, but instead of stopping as he usually did, he simply walked past her. He walked over to his chair and continued reading the newspaper as he had been doing before he was interrupted. If he thought Josie would back down, he was wrong. Where have you been all day? She practically screamed. I went to Denny's for Thanksgiving dinner and then spent the rest of the day at the movies. We had a wonderful lunch right here, Raymond. Why on earth did you go to Denny's? It's not about the food, Josephine. It's about the company. I can't believe that a 64-year-old man can't be polite to a guest I invited to our house. I would never treat someone you invited like that. I told you that I would not be in this house at the same time as him, ever. I didn't mean only when he was there to take care of your so-called needs. I meant always, and you knew it, but did it anyway. It was just dinner, Ray. Maybe for you, Ray said, and then raised the newspaper between them, signaling the end of the conversation. About five minutes of silence passed before Christine, his own daughter and obvious traitor to the cause, knelt next to him on the floor. Dad, please try to understand that he means a lot to her. She doesn't love him or anything, but she cares about him and didn't want him to be alone on the holiday. And you don't see a problem in the fact that mom's free and becomes part of the family? He's not part of the family, Dad but he is the person in her life, a friend like any other friend. Ray knew it was a lost cause. Of course, Christine, I understand. I hope so, Dad. See you later. After kissing him on the cheek, Christine left. Josie didn't appear again that evening, and when Ray finally got up wearily from his chair and went into the bedroom, she was already asleep. Thanksgiving seemed to be a turning point, at least in some respects. Shows of affection were virtually non-existent as Ray and Josie became more neighbors than anything else. Josie believed that her decision to take a lover was justified because Ray was not doing a good job, and she viewed Ray's reaction as selfish and ego-driven. Ray regarded Josie's choice as a betrayal of their marriage and life together. He managed to treat her kindly, and they communicated as they needed to, but the love that had been built over 40 plowal years of relationship was fading. When Josie said she needed to do some last-minute shopping on Christmas Eve, Ray said nothing, even though she hadn't needed to do last-minute shopping in years. He knew where she was going and didn't have to follow her or track her phone. The look in her eyes told him everything he needed to know. Whether she just wanted to exchange gifts or wanted something more, he didn't know but he knew that she would have a private celebration with him. On New Year's Eve, Ray did kiss his wife at midnight, although this kiss did not have the same passion as in past years. Josie was disappointed that she couldn't express anything to Luke, but she still called him the next day to wish him a happy new year. With Valentine's Day approaching, Ray had planted a nice dinner, 
at an upscale seafood restaurant, and Josie was excited about the prospect of the holiday. This made her think that perhaps her husband was returning to her. But Ray was overcome by vague suspicions. Josie's desire to spend the holidays with her lover got him thinking about Valentine's Day. It was Valentine's Day, after all, and Ray doubted Josie would let it pass without seeing Luke. So he decided to leave the office for a while and watch his home. He parked at the end of the street so he had a clear view of the front door and surrounding streets. Sure enough, he saw Luke park around the corner and walk down the sidewalk. Ray half expected him to just walk into the house, but he knocked and waited for Josie to let him in. Ray doubted they were just going to talk. It was their personal Valentine's Day celebration. Apparently, they weren't just sex buddies anymore. Dinner that evening was a low-key affair. Josie approached him with a positive attitude and hope of rekindling her relationship with her husband. But the high spirits he had shown over the last few days had disappeared. Josie was disappointed, but tried to make the best of it, wondering what could have caused such a change. Since they didn't have small children, Easter was mostly just an excuse for a big family dinner. They hid a few eggs around the yard, but they were big plastic eggs that usually contained a gift card or something. It was just a little fun to get into the holiday spirit. To Ray's relief, Luke wasn't invited. Josie had at least complied with that request after that Thanksgiving fiasco, but Ray knew that she came to him on days other than Saturday morning, and perhaps more often than he realized. She did it for Valentine's Day, and of course she could do it on other days as well. After the morning's festivities ended, Ray announced that he was going to lie down. True, he was a little tired, but nothing that he couldn't handle. He just wanted to avoid having to sit and deal with the family that betrayed him. He couldn't avoid them completely, but he could limit the amount of time he spent with them. It was a beautiful day, and he opened one of the windows overlooking the backyard. A cool breeze rushed into the room. Unfortunately, so did Josie and Christine's conversation. So, how's Luke doing? He heard his daughter ask. Shh, not too loud. I don't want your father to hear. Okay, okay, Christine replied, lowering her voice but still loud enough for Ray to hear. I just can't believe that my mom has a boyfriend ten years younger than me. He's not my boyfriend, Christine. He just, come on, mom. You have sex with him two, three times a week, and you two also go out to dinner. You might not want to use the word boyfriend, but that's what he is anyway. Okay, okay, he's my boyfriend. I just want to be considerate of your father's feelings. I know, Mom, and I love Dad, too, you know, and I don't want him to get hurt. But let's be honest, he's an old man, and you're a young woman. He's only five years older than me, Christine. In terms of physical age, yes, but you're an active woman and he can barely get through the day without taking a nap. You deserve it. Honestly, I'm a little jealous that you're going through the whole dating process again. Does anyone else know? I mean, is it more than just Saturday mornings? Leo, Eric, and Rebecca know. I don't introduce girls to this. Does everyone agree with this? Leo and Eric don't see this as a problem. They agree with me that you should be allowed to meet your needs since Daddy can't do that. Rebecca is the only one who thinks it's wrong, but she doesn't want to see Daddy get hurt, so she promises she won't say anything. What Dad doesn't know won't hurt him. Hearing about the depths to which his wife's betrayal had sunk and how his daughter wholeheartedly supported her mother having a boyfriend, Ray felt the last traces of love and affection for them leave his heart. Although he made many preliminary preparations, he refrained from going too far out of love for his family and his long marriage to Josie. Now is the time to begin the final process, in earnest. Ray slowly closed the window and climbed into bed. Over the next couple of months, Ray's relationship with his wife and daughter deteriorated. Things weren't any better with his son and son-in-law, but he tried to improve his relationship with Rebecca and his granddaughters, based on what Christine had said about Rebecca and his belief that the granddaughters were simply too young to truly understand the situation. Mother's Day Every family has its own traditions. For this family, Mother's Day was an upscale brunch at a local French-themed restaurant. The food and service were excellent, and the prices reflected this. 
When the children were little, Ray took his family to celebrate Mother's Day with his wife. When the children grew up and began working, they took responsibility for the celebration. They did the same for Father's Day. The peculiarity of this family was that the other parent did not participate in the celebration. Years ago, Ray stopped going to Mother's Day and Josie stopped going to Father's Day. They allowed the children to celebrate with the respective parent and express their feelings later. But Ray had a feeling, brought on by the events of the past few months. So, although he usually used his free time to read or do something else, this morning he got dressed and went to the restaurant. Josie had been gone for about 30 minutes, so he knew she would be there. He had no intention of participating in the brunch or even making Anione aware of his presence. Moreover, he doubted that he would have to get out of the car at all. He drove around the restaurant parking lot, easily finding Christine and Eric's car, then Josie's car, then Leo and Rebecca's car. He was beginning to hope he was wrong until he saw what he was looking for, but hoped he wouldn't find, hidden in the corner of a parking space, Luke's car. Ray had seen her quite a few times and remembered the number. His wife, or maybe his daughter, invited her lover, boyfriend, whatever. Wife to take part in a family event, knowing that Ray would not be there. Despite everything that had been done so far, and despite the fact that Ray's love for his wife had essentially faded away, this new betrayal made him furious. And if earlier he was going to moderate his actions, now he had no such intentions. Ray returned to his home, picked up his golf clubs, and went to the local golf course. He used several buckets, losing count. By the end, he was exhausted. The blows were not very far and not very accurate, but he felt better. He drove home, ready to take a nap. They considered him useless, unable to go through the day without sleep. He would allow them to continue to think so. Josie greeted him as he walked through the door. He wondered if she was having a private celebration with her boyfriend, although in truth, he didn't care anymore. It all still hurt, but it wasn't anything to worry about. As he entered the house, he wondered if she would admit to inviting Luke if given the opportunity. How did you celebrate Mother's Day with your family? Ray asked, putting a slight emphasis on family. That was wonderful, Ray. Thanks for asking. I had a great time with the kids, Josie replied. She didn't mention Luke. Did this mean that she and the rest of the family considered him family, or did she simply decide not to mention him? Ray decided he would never know. He went to his bedroom and dozed off. Soon the 4th of Julie arrived again. Josie was always in a good mood, and Ray, of course he, knew why. He had stuck by her side for almost a year now, and no doubt Josie thought she had succeeded. She had a husband who supported her, and a young guy with whom she met several times a week. Her life, in her opinion, was almost perfect. Luke started a new job where he worked in the evenings, which allowed him to spend a few half days a week with Josie. They didn't pay that much, but she wasn't with him for his money. Not wanting to rub Ray's nose in it, they avoided Josie's bedroom on all but Saturday matinees. This meant they used Luke's apartment or borrowed a place from friends if that wasn't an option. After all, he has roommates. The hardest thing for her was to exclude Luke from participating in the events. She didn't bring it up with Ray again and didn't think he would change his mind. That was the only thing she was unhappy about. At first, she hoped, and still hopes, that Ray and Luke could become, if not friends, then at least buddies. They gave her different things, so in her opinion they were not competitors. She spent her days with Luke and her evenings and weekends with Ray. She couldn't understand why it couldn't work. So, reluctantly, she didn't invite Luke to the family barbecue and fireworks trip. The family arrived early to help prepare the meal. Ray tried to be visible and active so that there would be no doubt later that he was tired. He watched the crowd carefully, wondering if Josie would drag Luke through, but he never showed up. As the day wore on, Ray pretended to get more and more tired. Okay, not all of it was pretend, but a lot of it definitely was. Maybe he was pretending too much because Josie seemed to notice and came towards him. Honey, why don't you lie down and relax before the fireworks? She suggested softly. The hardest thing about this whole situation was that he knew that Josie loved him 
and truly cared about him, and that made it even harder to do what he was about to do. I'm not going to the fireworks, so I decided to just enjoy the day with my family and go to bed early, Ray replied. You're sure? You missed it last year? But before that, you always looked forward to it, Josie noted, sincerely worried that he would miss it again. Sure, I guess I'm just getting old, but I'm sure everyone will have fun without me. Okay, if you're sure. As soon as she left him, Josie immediately went in search of Christine. Ray watched as she made her way through the crowd looking for her daughter. Josie, he suddenly realized, was trying to figure out if he was planning to attend the fireworks and there was only one reason that could take priority. She planned to invite Luke to join them for the fireworks. Not that it mattered, but the latest betrayal stung painfully. As the evening wore on, the guests began to leave until only family members remained. Josie, Christine, Leo, and Eric stopped by at one point to ask if he was sure he wanted to join them for the fireworks, and all expressed that they would miss him when he said he would stay home. Ray saw it for what it was, and knew his family was lost to him. As the family prepared to leave for the fireworks, Ray swallowed his anger and tried to communicate with each family member. No matter what happened over the past year, he has many fond memories of their time together, and he will miss those times. He hugged his granddaughters the tightest of all. Ray watched melancholy as the family happily climbed into Christine's minivan. It was clear that no one even missed him, he put them out of his mind and continued going about his business. The family returned a little later than usual, giving Josie time to be alone with Luke. He thanked them for the invitation, especially since he had no family or close relatives nearby. Although no one other than Josie spent much time with him, they came to consider him part of the extended family and were delighted with how happy he made Josie. They said goodbye in the park, since he obviously couldn't go back to the house with them. As they entered the house, they tried to be quiet, not wanting to disturb Ray. They poured themselves a drink and gathered around the dining room table to chat for a while. It must have been 30, 45 minutes before Josie remembered Ray and asked her son to go check on him. Leo obediently got up from the table and slowly walked into the bedroom. He didn't find Ray asleep in bed, but he discovered that the bedspread had been pulled back revealing snow-white sheets underneath. Josie always insisted on white sheets. On these sheets, Leo found Ray's wedding ring and a flash drive. This did not bode well. He's not there, Leo said, leaving the bedroom. What do you mean, he's not there? asked his mother. That's right, Mom. No one was sleeping in the bed and I found this on the sheets next to his pillow. Not fully believing her son's words, Josie went into the bedroom and looked for herself and it was true. The bed was unused, and there was no sign of her husband. When she returned to the living room, Eric was already connecting the flash drive to the laptop to see what was on it. When the contents became visible, there was only one file in the list, although it was quite large. Eric looked at his mother, and she nodded at him. He double-clicked the file. The computer's video player came to life, and Eric expanded the image to full screen. At first, it was just a blank wall, but they could hear voices. After a few seconds, Ray walked up to the camera. Is there a recording going on? He asked the invisible operator. Yes, answered a female voice. Ray looked at the camera. Good evening, everyone. If I time it right, you're watching this a little after 10 South p.m., having just returned from the fireworks show. Everyone reflexively looked at the clock next to them and saw that it was almost 11 nog p.m. because they hadn't bothered to check on Ray when they got home. Right now, as you watch this video, I am sitting on a plane that is flying through the air and will not land until it is far beyond the borders of the United States. In case you're wondering, I won't be back. No! Josie screamed, breaking into tears. You betrayed me, the video continued. Each of you, my wife who had my love and support for over 40 years, who had never had to work a day in her life except raising our children, cast me aside like trash for a guy half my age. And when I had the audacity to object, she turned the whole family against me. I would have thought that 40 years of loyalty, dedication, faithfulness, and support would mean more to you, Josephine. I think I deserve it. Your desires, 
and I think we all know that they were actually wants, not needs. But your desires had to take a back seat to my feelings. It was bad enough that you did this behind my back, but the fact that you forced my family to side with you was even worse. That day I felt like I had been stabbed in the heart seven times. Christine, your betrayal was as bad as your mother's betrayal. Growing up, you were always daddy's girl. We did everything together. The fact that you supported your mother in cheating on me, in committing adultery against her own father, broke my heart even more than what your mother did. Even if I had not heard from you that I am an old man who does not deserve a faithful wife, my heart would be completely broken. I did not say that, Christine said out loud. Never. Leo, Eric, you must be the biggest idiots in the world. Do you even realize that you just gave your wives permission to cheat on you? Leo, I doubt Rebecca is capable of this, but some of what I heard from my daughter should concern you, Eric. All she has to do is find a reason to say that you are not satisfying her, and she will leave. She has already told her mother how jealous she is of her. Eric looked at Christine, who shook her head as Ray's words poured out of the speaker. No, baby. I never said that, and I wouldn't do that. It's not like you can object, Ray continued. You already said that this is quite normal for Josie, unless you meant that it was only normal because it wasn't you who was cheated on. Right, Eric. Were you completely okay with cheating on someone else? I bet when your turn comes, you won't be so accommodating. And I bet Christine is already in denial that she would do something like that. But ask her, if she thinks it would be wrong for her, why was it okay for her mother? Her answer will be eloquent. Eric paused the video and looked at his wife. You said that you are jealous of your mother? He finally asked. I don't remember exactly what I said. I only know that I was glad that my mother was going through this stage of a new relationship, the acquaintance, in order to find out for herself again. So, do you want to get to know someone again? Eric continued. No, baby. Please don't make too much of it, okay? I love you and don't want to be with anyone else. Only if I can no longer perform, right? Honey, can we talk about this later? We need to focus on mom now. Okay, but this is not the end yet. Eric pressed play again and Ray continued. I didn't want to stay in a marriage in which my wife was cheating on me every week, and I certainly wasn't going to stay once I found out it was increasing to several times a week. Sorry, Josephine, but you weren't nearly as reserved and delicate as you thought. How about inviting him to celebrate Mother's Day? It was simply tasteless. As you might expect, I have no intention of telling you where I went, but I can assure you that even if you find me, there is nothing you can do about it. I should also mention the financial situation that I have left for you. I took most of our money because I intend to live the rest of my life in retirement as a reward to myself for putting everyone else first for most of my adult life. Josephine, I left you a house which, as you know, is paid for and worth several hundred thousand. My lawyer will contact you and help you complete the sale if you want. I also left about $400,000 in the bank. That's $10,000 for every good year you gave me. I'm afraid no loans in the last 12 months. None of you need worry about me. Taking the rest of our assets, including investment accounts, gave me a nearly eight-figure bank balance, so I'll be fine. Not that I really thought any of you would care. I think the way I've been treated over the last year clearly shows how you all still feel about me. Oh, and if you're worried about me spending my golden years alone, don't worry about that either. I already have a companion, and she is sitting next to me on the plane right now. But let me introduce you. Deborah, a face corresponding to a female voice appeared from behind the camera and entered the frame. Attention, this is Deborah. She is the one who will help me spend your inheritance. Hi, everyone, said the attractive brunette, who looked to be in her mid-fifties, as she waved back at the camera. Deborah and I have been keeping close company for about the last four to five months, after I told her what my wife was doing. Nothing special, just spending a lot of time together and confirming how compatible we are. But Josephine, you probably remember Deborah. You've met her several times. We have worked together for over 30 years ever since she was hired in the marketing department. She took early retirement to join me in my new home. We have been close friends all this time, and the best part is that her needs 
are nothing more than a desire for intimacy. Hugs, kisses, and maybe a few other personal things are more than fine for her. I'm looking forward to it. Everyone looked at Josie to see how she took this revelation, and it was clear from the look on her face that she didn't take it well. Eric paused the video. Mom, are you okay? Leo asked. No, Leo, I'm definitely not okay. But let's just get this over with. Eric started the video again. Josephine, Ray said, his tone becoming more serious. I loved you from the very day we met. If someone had told me that you could treat me like that, I would have knocked them out before they finished speaking. I looked forward to spending our final years together and receiving visits from our children, grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren. I'm so disappointed that your physical needs ruined this for us, for me. For your sake, I hope it was worth it. You should have enough money to last a long time, especially if you sell the house. If you need more, I'm sure the children who supported your romance will also want to support you financially. Now that I think about it, it was my money that got them through college and good jobs, so I guess I have a lot to do with that. It was a terrible year, and things were getting worse. I at least knew about the extra time you spent with him every week. I could have ended this months ago, but I liked the idea of declaring my independence on Independence Day, so I waited. I guess there is some part of me that will always love you, or at least what we had. I wish things were different, but somewhere along the way, you forgot that our marriage is us, and not you and me. I've always tried not to make choices that would benefit me and hurt you, like you did with Luke. You probably thought that I would somehow come to terms with this, maybe because before I always sacrificed myself for you. I don't know. It doesn't matter for what reason it's done and cannot be undone. For your sake, I hope it was worth it. Goodbye, Josephine. I will miss you and what we could have had. Ray looked straight into the camera when the screen went dark. Everyone in the room was in tears, although some more than others. Neither of them thought that Josie and Luke's relationship would alienate Ray. In the past, he had always given way to Josie, and they thought that would be the case in this case as well. Deep down, no one thought he had the guts to do anything other than accept it. Tired, they all stayed overnight at Josie's house. She needed their support. Rebecca was cleaning the kitchen when the phone rang. The only calls she received were from her husband, Leo, or some unwanted calls. She looked at the screen. The number was blocked. This seemed quite strange to her, and she decided to answer. Hello? Rebecca, this is Ray. Oh, God, Ray! How are you? Where are you? I'm fine, Rebecca, just fine. I won't say anything about where I am for now. More importantly, how are you? I'm fine, Dad, but I have news. I am pregnant. Congratulations. For what period? Just a couple of months. We found out about this right after you left. I can't believe you've been gone for almost three weeks. Yes, time flies. By the way, thanks for calling me Dad. I thought I had lost this title. Not with me. You know, Dad, I owe you an apology. I had to speak up. When everyone confronted you that day and you asked our opinion, I had to say that I thought it was wrong, but I was new to the family and was afraid. I had a feeling, but I don't think it would have mattered anyway. Josie and Christine seemed eager for this to happen. Consider yourself forgiven. Thank you, Dad. This was very important to me, especially since I hope to have both grandfathers in my child's life. And will you be in his life? We'll see, honey. I'm not going back to the States, but maybe we can work something out. I would really like to see you and the baby. So, how are things going there? In a word, tense. Josie is not herself most of the time, although this does not stop her from seeing Luke several times a week. Kristen and Eric are having problems. They're keeping it a secret. But I think your comments about her having a reason to cheat on him hit a nerve. How are you and Leo? We are fine. We're still just getting started in our marriage, so it's still fresh. I think Christine and Eric have been married for so long. I don't know. Maybe it just makes them both a little more cautious. The girls, however, are devastated. Is it true? This surprises me. You guys have always been so close. They miss spending time with you. They still don't think that a little casual sex is a big deal. 
but they understand that doing it when you're first dating is different than when you're married. I understand. I noticed a clear influence from Christine when they responded. Listen, could you please gather everyone at your place tonight? I think I'm ready to talk to them. I don't think that will be a problem, Dad. Then we'll talk. That evening, the whole family gathered in Leo and Rebecca's living room. Rebecca made it clear that Luke was not invited. She made sandwiches, and everyone ate some but were too preoccupied to eat much. At 8 o'clock, the phone rang and Rebecca put it on speaker. Hi, Dad. All here. Thank you, honey. Just so everyone knows, Deborah is in the room with me, too. Let's all try to be polite and have a conversation rather than start an argument. Do you agree? The assembled family members expressed general agreement. Fine. I thought we should talk, but wanted to wait until some time had passed. Of course, I contacted Rebecca first. I did this because some things I overheard made me think she wasn't as okay with it as the rest of you. Leo, congratulations on your baby. Thank you, Dad. I will try to live up to the standards of fatherhood that you set, and I don't just say that. As they say, the best thing you can do for your children is to love their mother. Remember this, and you will succeed. Allison, Julia? Yes, Grandfather. His granddaughter said practically in unison. Girls, I was disappointed that you supported your grandmother in this, but your aunts Rebecca and Deborah convinced me that you may have been under undue pressure and that you lacked the life experience to understand the dynamics of adulthood and a 40-year marriage. I still have your emails and phone numbers, so we can talk about this later if you don't mind. Of course, Grandpa, Allison replied. We just miss you. I miss you, too. Why don't you go and find something to do while everyone else is talking? The girls said goodbye and went about their business. Before leaving, they still stopped and hugged their grandmother. So, Ray continued, does anyone have anything they're just dying to say? Ray, honey, please, Josie began, surprising no one. Please come back. We can get through this. If you had told me that you were really going to leave me, we could have worked it out. Why has it gone so far, Josephine? I told you I wouldn't accept this and you turned to your family for support. Then you started inviting him to family events and seeing him several times a week. You replaced me with him when you and I were barely roommates. You let it happen and I finally had enough. But you didn't say anything else. I thought you had come to terms with it, realized that it was just something I did. It drove a wedge into our marriage, and there was no other way out but this. From the moment I found out what you were doing and you chose him over me, our marriage was doomed. I'm so sorry, Ray. Can't we? No, Josephine, we can't. Even if I wanted to and I don't, I made a commitment to Deborah and I intend to keep it. What about your obligation to me? You took it first. Yes, it is. And I would still be there doing it, but as far as I understand, when you broke yours, you freed me from yours and gave me the opportunity to take on a new one. Which is what I did. Everything around was silent, and only the sounds of Josie's sobs broke the silence. Josie, Ray said quietly. I'm sorry, but there's no point in having this conversation. Whether you wanted it or not, you threw me aside. There is no turning back. Without another word, Josie stood up and left the room to take refuge in Christine and Eric's room. Christine attacked. Very nice, Dad. Did you call just to hurt your mom and make her cry? All because your ego couldn't handle another man making her feel better than you? I guess that's how you see it, Christine. Eric, how's your ego doing? Is it ready to accept that another man will make your wife feel better than you? Christine suddenly stopped her attacks under her husband's gaze. Throughout their marriage, Christine was the dominant partner, and Eric, like many husbands, tried to get along with her. But over the past few weeks, a significant shift had occurred, and Christine realized that her marriage was in serious danger. You can't support another woman's right to cheat on her husband without feeling at least a little guilty by association. No, Ray, that's definitely not true. And you were right. I never thought about it in those terms. After all this, my wife and I had some pretty serious problems. I understand, and let me say this, for what it's worth. Fight for your marriage before it's too late. 
You love each other but have begun to take each other for granted. I noticed this before all this confusion started. Don't let this be the end, all be all, but let it be a catalyst for change. You are a team. Remember this. Josie didn't do this. There was a long silence, mainly because at this point no one had anything else to say. Then, in a voice almost like that of a little girl, Dad, Christine said, is it okay if I talk to you alone? If everyone else doesn't mind, then I don't mind either. Christine looked around. No one objected, so she picked up the phone and went into the spare room, closing the door. Dad, I'm scared. Eric talked about divorce and, at least, counseling. What should I do? You'll fix everything, Christine. Here's what you'll do. Your girls are grown up, at least for the most part. Now put that time you spent raising them back into your marriage. This is not free time, as your mother believed. Remember that you are not his boss. You are his partner. He's really angry. Once he started looking at it like I was giving myself permission to cheat on him, he got so angry. He constantly snaps at me and I know he wonders if I've already done something. Did you do it? No, Daddy, no. But I don't know how to convince him of this. All you can do is make sure there is no cause for suspicion in the future. If you do this, questions about the past should disappear. Dad, I'm really sorry. Isn't there some way to fix this? I mean, you and Mom? It's too late for us, honey, but not for you. Okay, Daddy. I love you. I love you too. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.